Hi, we're here at Zana Beach Club. I'm with Jeremy Healy. Hi. How, How you doing, doing, Jeremy? You good? I'm really good, thank you. It's lovely to be here. Oh, yeah, is it your first time in Phuket? Or? No, I actually started coming here in the 80s. Oh, yeah? Yeah, wow. and there was only about two roads here then, and, and no oh. discos or anything. It was just uh, hippies and beaches then. So you just Surfers. come out to, to relax and... I've come out, I'm just doing a, a mini Asian tour. I've just been in Bali and Singapore. Yeah. And then I, I come here and then I'm back to um, um, Gunna Samui tomorrow. Oh, okay, nice. And then back to London then. And where, where are you going to play in Samui? A new club just opening called Dreamers. It hasn't opened yet, it's oh, opening tomorrow okay, night. Nice, nice, brilliant, brilliant. And how about Bali and Singapore? Do you enjoy your time there? Or? Yeah, I've, very, I've been to Bali four times this year, so um, it's become a regular haunt. Uh, a friend of mine's opening a club there, and um, I've got a good thing going with a, a club called Cocoon there, which is oh, a cocoon, nice yeah. beach club, and we get about a thousand people down there. And nice. it's, been, it's been going well, so I've been going there every three months this yeah. year. So. And so, any and what are your plans after after Asia? Right, going back to London, yeah. and we're actually going to Glastonbury for the first time, wow. which is kind of scary. Yeah, yeah. I hope Can the be. weather is going to be good because yeah. going to take you well in boots. Oh, yeah, you've got to take well in some boots. I've actually got to go and buy a, a specially prep them. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I've got to do that when I get home. I'm slightly scared. Yes. We've got a yurt. You oh, know. yurt. We're going a Mongolian gold, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a Mongolian oh, yurt. And um, and I've never been before. And there's a few people I know are on the bill. And oh, you know, obviously, you've never been. I've never been. The only festival I did I did a a cream festival once. Okay. And there were forty five thousand people, and it and it rained, and it was the mo it was like being on a foreign uh, in 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 space on a different planet. Whoa. There were forty five thousand people there. Um, I had to play after Public Enemy, which was kind of scary, <laughs> and. Um, I was looking out in this tent and there were like 15,000 people in this tent and the rain and the, a sea of mud flew through the middle of this wow. tent, literally four foot deep of mud and people were just stuck in the mud and nobody could dance and or anything. And it put me off festivals for about 10 right. years. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, my, my family, uh, they live up in Glastonbury, so I used to oh, go really? and stay in the house and not camp. So we didn't have all the money. Yes. So we see the X and then we could go home yeah. and then come back. I actually do a festival every, every year. It's not on this year, but um, it's a, actually a literary festival in Cornwall. And it, that is really fun. That's about 5,000 people. Oh, wow. And it's an amazing in, in this um, sort of stately home place. Yeah. And that is really cool. And I love doing that. And is I that do like that a secret year. garden kind of thing? It's a, it's, it actually started off as a literary festival and they've introduced more and more music all the time and I don't know people like Jarvis and Suggs uh, D, you know and they get oh, nice. a few and they started in introducing dance music yeah, and, yeah. and uh, they got me to do they have film film directors giving talks and writers and stuff in the day and then it becomes more musical as the night goes on but it's a good size it's like yeah. 5,000 and you know it, it's quite comfortable but I yeah. am scared of Glastonbury <laughs> you are scared yes. anyway yeah. But where are you going to perform there? You're going to be in the dance. No, I'm not performing there. I'm just going to watch uh, some friends ah, of mine, okay. Primal Scream, are on, and um, awesome. um, and I know some some of the DJs that are on it because there's 200 odd stages. Yeah, so yeah, there's you know, a lot. I mean, I don't oh, so know. So this is just for leisure, just for you to yeah. chill and enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, on so the first I'm, time. Yeah, I'm I'm just kind of looking forward to it. I tried to back out of it. Yeah, too yeah, no, I would feel it as well. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going back to do that, and then um, of course we got. Then we're into July and, and the full-on Mediterranean season. So. So then you would travel back out again. Well, I'll just be travelling around the Med doing various yeah. gigs and stuff. So is that what you do all, almost all the year? You just continuously are touring <laughs> and travelling. I try to. Yeah, yeah I'm chasing the sun. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and then uh, it, when it comes. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to. Um, when it comes to September, I go to New York because yeah. I my my proper job is doing Victoria's Secret. That's just what I was about to ask and go on yeah. to next. Can you tell us a little bit about that? 
Yeah, it's it's funny actually because it's everywhere in Singapore. Like I was, I kept walking in these places and they're showing our, our, our show everywhere. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, sure. Why is this on here? You know, it's in the in the botanical garden. There's a big screen. With, I've just told the guy who runs it. I said, you know, I've just been in Singapore and they're showing the show in shopping malls and you know all over the place. It's crazy. And how did you get? How do you get involved with them in, in the first place? Twelve years ago, I got headhunted by this company that nobody had ever heard of right. in Europe. Although yeah. they were a sort of a low rent mail order company yeah. in in uh, in America, and they you know they headhunted me and an art director and a stylist from from the Paris fashion show world, wow. which which I do, and um, they just said yeah we want you to come and work, and we and we started doing this television show which we had no idea about how to do. We made loads of mistakes. <laughs> I didn't understand about copyright clearances, all right, this yeah, stuff sure. that you know you. I just thought you can do anything you want and then just pay and it will get done, you know, yes. but it's not that simple. It's like you have to license record and you have to talk to the acts to see if they want to be a part of it and it, if it's right, if it's a good fit for them and that. So it's quite complicated and it takes about two months to put the whole thing together. Yeah, I'm sure. And um, it turned out to be, you know, we've grown it every year and it's become a sort of um, an amazing... Um, experience I've met so many of the big pop stars in America yeah. now when we started we had trouble getting acts for it and now, now basically we can work with with anyone you know that, yeah. that's got a hot record out and yeah. they want to be on the show because of the production's amazing the budgets are huge um, the director is a guy called Hamish Hamilton who's he's 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 a guy from Blackpool right. and he's uh He's won just about everything now. He's he, he just got a BAFTA and uh, wow. he did the Oscars and everything. And he's an amazing live director. Yeah. We've got three cameras here. Yeah. He uses 54 cameras, Whoa. live cameras. So yeah, he's got yeah. this truck with all these yeah, screens. Yeah, the angle, the angle. yeah, yeah, everything. And <laughs> yeah. he cuts it all together. Wow, it's amazing. He's, he's, and it's funny because his direct, you know, he's a, that's all he does is live events, live yeah. gigs. He does Madonna and U2 sure. and everything. So he's a, but he's a specialist. That's all he does, and he's yeah. he's the best at it, and he's amazing to work with. Yeah. And do you have a passion for fashion as well? And this this whole yeah, world? I've always since since I was a kid. I mean, I was um, I worked for Vivian Westwood and Malcolm McLaren when I was fourteen years old. Wow. Um, you know, when I was a little kid, basically, yeah. I, I just went up to their shop, and Vivian was in there, and you know, I just hung out there every Saturday, cool. and. You know, and that was amazing, yeah, and, that is and amazing. so I always, you know, and obviously all the Sex Pistols and yeah, all that sure. was happening then, and and that's how, that was my intro to it, you know. That yeah. was, and I've always what a good, <laughs> I've always had get a better, yeah, yeah. I've had a, always had a foot in in those two camps, and I worked with my friend John Galliano for 26 years, every show he's ever done. And uh, you know, and and various other obviously. So, you, so you're fr good friends with John Galliano. Yes. Wow. Yes. Um, he's, a, he's a very close friend of mine. Oh, nice. He's actually from not very far away. He's from Peckham. Oh, so. is he Peckham? Yeah. Okay, mm. I see right. Well, I, recently I went back to London about two years ago. I bought a fedora. Oh, yeah. So I'm rocking down the, the streets. Get on get on What's going on? And they went, yeah, mate, it's the hat because he's got the similar kind of hat, you know. Yeah. That's awesome. Really, really cool. <laughs> it's a small world. Yeah, it is a small world. So let's, let's move on about music. So let's talk about some music. How, how do you feel music is now? How do you feel about the electronic dance scene and everything? Yeah, I think I, I mean, we were talking about DJs, you know, how big it is in... I mean, Vegas is the place now yeah. where, where the, all the money is and the crazy crowds and 20,000 people and all that, which that scene didn't exist 10 years ago and now, yes. it, now it's there. And, um, but I th still, I mean, obviously the, 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 the sort of mecca is still Ibiza, I yes. think. You yeah. know. But what do you feel about Thailand now? Because Thailand seems to be becoming more of a destination they, they like Ibiza, they want to try and push more beach clubs, more... Yeah, I th music. well, stra strangely enough, what's happening in Ibiza now is there are a lot of beach clubs opening up. And yes. it is, um, uh, one of my friends there, uh, who's got a, a bar called Mambo, which is a very famous bar there, Javi, yeah. he was telling me that actually people's going out habits have really changed now. And they mm -hmm. go out at four o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. go to a beach club, dance until like eight, or, eight or nine or ten, and the and and the clubs now aren't running all night anymore, so it's really different. And the the, 
the beach club thing is is where it's at. I mean, I love open air venues, yeah, me don't too. you? Yeah, yeah, it's, the it's, best. it's better than get, being yeah, in yeah, a dark yeah, old being disco. in a little dingy room so, in London. Well, there's there's two sides, yeah. you know. Like, it's nice to do that for a bit, yeah. but I mean, yeah, I'd much rather yeah. be. Well, seven years I've been here now, yeah. and not been back to London. <laughs> <laughs> well, three years. You're gonna ago, freeze. Yeah. No, yeah. But when I go back to London now, it's like a holiday for me, you know? Mm -hmm. I go and abuse London like people come to Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, um, it's, it's, you know, this place is gorgeous. And um, I, I, last time I came, we did um, an Iron Man thing here. Oh, yeah? Which was, uh, a part, it was the after party for the Iron Man. And I thought, are these guys going to be like really conservative? Because they're, they're athletes yeah, sure, and, right, and right. they were like crazy. They were like the biggest kids in the in the, in the toy yeah, shop. Yeah, yeah, a bit, a bit. And uh, that got very, very messy. People fell asleep in the swimming pool, and you know had to be scraped out, and carried off, and whatever. But, but um, yeah. So it, it was a real fun party. So <laughs> yeah. I hope the one tonight's going to be good. Yeah, let's hope so. So uh, on, on an end note, so future plans for Healy? Any, um, any productions or anything in the, in the woodwork? I'm not working on the, any any uh, records at the moment. Um, I had I, I worked with um, Gwen Stefani, yeah. and I did a couple of records with her a while ago when she was solo. But she's gone back to her band now. But yeah. she called me up last week and said, uh, you know, can you give us some tips for the new No Doubt album? So I fired her off some ideas, and yeah. we'll see what comes off with that really. Yeah. But other than that, I'm not planning on making any any. Uh, pop records at the moment but that could all change. I heard sure. some of your stuff. Some re was it a gold frap, right? Was it a gold frap remix that you did? Um, not that I know of, no. Ah, maybe it <laughs> it might have been a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean my first love is still DJing rather than making records. It's because you get that instant gratification of the crowd and all that whereas in a studio you've got to be in a dark room and a screen and everything. Yeah. So I do enjoy that more. And like we were saying earlier as well, down to technology and, and, and what tools you use, and, and what's your preference? What, what are you happy? Are you happy with anything, or have you, you know, you, you have to have CDJs or? Um, well, I think, you know, like it's all swings and roundabouts. Some things are better than other things, yeah. and it, it, it doesn't matter to me. It's, it's a, it's the music that matters, not what it's delivered on. And some yeah, exactly. certain people think you're cheating if you use this, or you, you know. It's stupid, you know, it's like yeah. listen to music. It doesn't matter yeah. how you get it there, it's what it sounds like that matters. Not, I agree 100%. Not how, you know, yeah. people, as long as the people are dancing yes. and having a good time, it doesn't um, matter what platform you use, no, right? No, yeah. Awesome. But um, I think it's just the nature of the world nowadays that, that, that people have invented sort of 24 things to do exactly the same job, yeah. you know. So in, in a way, it's harder because you sift through everything and you know, you have to go through. I mean, I know how to do this with three or four different systems now, sure, which yeah. I never thought yeah, I could yeah, get with. Yeah, yeah, one of the yeah, you just want like one you way, and I want to do it this one, way. This one, yeah. It's got to work. And yeah. now you've got to sort of be, you've got to be able to switch things. Flexible. That, uh, because with this, all the technology, it's bloody unreliable. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> so, yeah. So um, the simple way was often the best. Yeah. When yeah. we look back at the simple turntables, exactly, yeah. there's something B. really beautiful about that, the simplicity yeah. of it. But we have to move on, you have to move with the times. Sure. And, uh, but that, that's why I like when we were saying about Serato, that I think the beauty and the great thing about Serato is you still can use turntables. Yeah. I think that's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's a brilliant thing, but when they they invented the CDJ thing. I got it. I was in I was in New York at the time, and I got it, and I started to. It's just like a record, and it was an amazing jump from yeah. the CDs before that. So you know the CDJ we forget now, but it was a great invention yeah, as well. Time, so yeah, yeah amazing, yeah. amazing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, it lovely. Was, it was great to chat to you. Cheers, man. Nice and, to meet uh, you. Let's have a good party tonight. Lovely. We've been speaking to Jeremy Healy. I'm Matt Vinyl, and this is this week in Phuket. The new Emerald Central Condominium, starting from 3.1 million baht. Visit the booth at Central Festival. The new Emerald Central Condominium. Quality living, quality condo.